But you believe in your heart is Islam. What? What is stopping you from taking a step and accepting it? Is there anything stopping you from that? Lack of certainty. Lack of certainty, okay. What you say right now, this is exactly what the Quran says. Uh, except, 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 except. Believe me, he has some, he has some issues. He has some, he has some, he has some issues with, with his mind. He ran from the debate earlier. No. He ran from the debate earlier. Let, let, him, let him let it out. Let him let it out. That's all right. Like this, right? They teach you how to stand in, in military, which is a very respectful way of standing, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you you from here? You're from the UK, you said, yeah. So, are you religious yourself? Do you believe in the Creator? Do you... I believe in God. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Very good. When you say you believe in God, how do you define God? I don't know. I'm, I'm agnostic in that belief. I, mm. I'm not certain. I guess mm. you could say the journey has started. Mm. So, um, so you're what agnostic I mean. about what God is, what type of God to believe in, etc. Right? But do you agree, there is basically this basic attributes that everyone agrees upon. For example, that like God is all-powerful, right? He's the creator, right? The world that we're living in. He is uh, all-knowing, right? Looking at what he created. He is uh, independent of what he made, right? He's one. In order for him to be supreme and independent and make harmony within the universe. So these are basic attributes that I believe everyone would, would probably agree upon. One, maybe some people say three in one, four in one. 11, 12. But the reality, would you agree that logically it has to be one? Okay, so we are, we are agreeing on the concept there. The concept of Allah is that. So no one is born ever believing that the Creator is Jesus, or, or born believing the Creator is Krishna, or, right? You have to be taught that concept. But Islam, Allah is not similar to any of His creation. It's not like any of His creation, right? That's the concept of Allah that we have. So we believe everyone is born with that concept. Everyone is born, me not him, yeah? <laughs> everyone is born, everyone is born with that, yeah, everyone is born with that concept. We refer to that concept as fitra. Fitra is an innate disposition that people are born with to recognize that there is a supreme higher power with the attributes, with the attributes that we spoke about. Come on guys, you're interrupting now. <laughs> okay, with the attributes, with the attributes that we spoke about, you're born believing in that. So for example, Oxford University conducted a study, right? 57 academics in a period of three years. 20 different countries, right? On children. And they said they have an innate receptivity of the divine. Also, there is a book written uh, called uh, The Gospel of the Red Man. It's written by a Christian who went to the Native Americans, right? And he saw their beliefs. It's exactly like the beliefs of the Muslims. It's something transcendent, beyond, cannot be seen, right? And they believe that everything they do for God is worship, which is the con Islamic concept. Anything you do, worship to us is not just bowing down, prostrating, that's a part of worship. Worship to us is anything you do for the sake of the Creator. Like what we're doing right now to me is worship, right? And helping someone in the road, giving a poor person money, that's all worship in Islam. The concept of worship is very encompassing in the, in the Islamic tradition, right? So that basic concept of the divine that you have, I believe you're born with it. That's why you agree with it. That's why it's the, the majority of people agree with that concept as well, yeah? So we're not going to add anything to that concept in, in reality, just a bunch of other attributes about justice and this and that, which you probably also believe in, right? Now, if you believe in a creator, do you agree when you make something, you give it purpose? Like a per the person who made your cap, give it the purpose, the person who made the shoes gives it purpose. So the purpose is assigned by the manufacturer, designer, or the maker, right? The shoes doesn't make its purpose one day, the phone doesn't make its purpose one day, right? The creator is the one who ascribes purpose to what he creates. Make sense? You agree? Okay. So, by that default, wouldn't you agree that in order for us to know our purpose, we have to communicate with the one who made us? You agree? Right, okay. How do you think would we communicate with our Creator? Okay. So, in Islamic tradition, we believe, and you probably heard as well, everyone heard of prophets, right? Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, Adam, Muhammad, all of them we believe are prophets coming to deliver the message of the Creator to the creation. Yeah? So Allah chooses the purest of people, the honest people, the, the trustworthy people to deliver His message to His creation, right? Because the, the seed is there, the fitra that we spoke about, the seed is there. So they just expound on it and they give you guidance in what you need in your everyday life. But they also introduce something which we call a miraculous nature of evidence to prove that these people are coming from the Creator. Because I can say to you, right now I'm a prophet of God or this or that, right? And then you will say, what is your evidence? Anyone can make that claim. And the reason God does not reveal Himself to every individual human being is that will cause trouble and contradictory and contradictions between people. For example, if you say God spoke to you, and I say God spoke to me and He said He didn't speak to you, 
you see the trouble how things are going to be, right? So there has to be a group of people are chosen by God to deliver the message to the creation, right? So, do you believe in prophets? Do you accept the existence of prophets? Do you accept that they were sent by God? Do you accept that? Yes? Okay, do you accept in Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham? Do you accept in all of them? Prophet Muhammad is a prophet. Okay, so you're Muslim. <laughs> I'm being serious. Because the, you know, the, 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 basic, uh, the, the basic criteria for someone to become a Muslim is to say, is to testify. We call it the Shahada. Shahada is a testimony of faith. It's testifying there's only one creator worthy of worship. Allah. Testifying that Prophet Allah, by the way, when we say Allah is the Arabic word for God. We don't believe Allah is male or female. It's gender neutral. It's not restricted by gender like humans. Right? So it's the concept that we were referring to. Something higher and beyond and powerful. Right? So if you testify there's only one God, Allah, which is the concept you believe in, and you testify that Prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God, by definition a person enters the fold of Islam. It's like baptism, but there is no baptism and there's nothing, you know? It's just Islam is simple. It's just testifying what you believe, which is already within your heart, right? Now, these prophets who came aforetime, Prophet Muhammad, for example, right? Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham. Each prophet was assigned to his people. Each prophet was assigned to the individuals. They were not assigned to everyone, except Prophet Muhammad. He was the last and final messenger. And God knew after Prophet Muhammad, they would be the age of technology, right? Everyone can communicate. You can communicate with someone in China. I can give him the message, right? So God doesn't need to send someone all over in China and send someone. Sorry? Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. Age of communication. So Allah sent the last and final messenger. And he made it an obligation on himself to provide, to uh, preserve the scripture, the message to everyone, for you and me and for everyone to read, right? But the previous scriptures Allah assigned for their people and he told the rabbis, the priests, etc. to preserve their books. But they didn't. It was a test from Allah to them, right? Not to change it, not to add things to it, and not to corrupt it. And they didn't follow the test. They didn't uh, achieve the goals that Allah have gave them to do, right? So then Allah preserved the last book for everyone. He didn't leave it for any human beings to preserve it. He said, I'm going to preserve it. I'm, I have, I'm the one who sent it down, and I'm the one who's going to preserve it, right? It's as simple as that. So. Uh, when it comes to Jesus, for example, he said, I've been only sent to the lost chief of the house of Israel. Moses sent to get the Israelites from Egypt to the promised land, right? Uh, Abraham was sent to his people. Each prophet was sent to his people and he was sent to his nation, right? Except Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, if you, believe, if you believe in the prophets, you believe these were prophets sent by the Creator, sent by the Divine, right? You believe in the Divine, in the concept, right? The same concept that we believe in. What is stopping you from taking a step and, and, and practicing the practicality of it? For example, how do you determine what is right and wrong? It's a great question. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't have a great answer. Okay, yeah, that's alright, that's okay. Morality is two things. Yeah. It's either subjective or objective, right? Subjective means it's dependent on the subject, ideas, understanding and emotions, right? Objective is outside of your ideas, understanding and emotions. Something for everyone, something universal, right? Now, Anyone who doesn't follow scripture from God, right, he will be following subjective morality, right? Because by definition, he's either taken from his parents, he's taken from his society, he's taken from the people around him. And if you believe in subjective morality, your end goal is nihilism. Do you know about nihilism? Yeah. So your end goal is affirming there is no good and bad in the world. And I know deep down you believe that that's not true. You believe that actually given the poor is a good act, objectively good, right? You believe that uh, killing an innocent person is bad, objectively bad, whether humans existed or not. So it's not a human construct of the mind. It's a fact and an objective reality that exists in it, right? But the creator himself is the one who assigns what is moral and what is not moral, right? So if you believe in the creator, don't you think that you should thank the creator for what he's given you? For example, if, if you go to any shop over there, any shop, yeah, it doesn't matter, yeah? And they give you a cup of what? You like coffee or, or hot chocolate? Hot chocolate? What? I only drink water. If they give you water, no problem. If they give you water, what would you say? Thanks. Thank you. That's a very healthy thing, by the way. I, I support that, yeah? <laughs> so if they, if they, you will say thank you. Will this thank you benefit them or harm them or make them taller? shorter no but they deserve it you believe they deserve it because they've given you something yeah what about the one who sends down the rain and vegetation grows you eat from the vegetation what, what about the one when you go to the sea you eat fish what about the one who gave you all this cattle what about the one who give you your eyesight and give you hearing you give you everything you have don't you think that is more worthy of that thank you than that person who gives you a, a bottle of water he is right that is what islam is islam is submission to that one creator 
and doing the good that he wants you to do, which is showing appreciation for, for what he's given us. And through following the Islamic commandments, we preserve goodness in society and within ourselves. Because if someone does an act which is bad, it doesn't just harm himself, you also have a societal impact, right? Someone, he, when he's, uh, you want to say something? No, 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 oh, yeah. everyone. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when someone drinks like alcohol excessively and he hits people on the road, or he uh, domestically abuses people in, in his house, or he uh, knife crime, like Metropolitan Police says, 2013, 2014, 60 to 70% of the night knife crime, was people under influence in a Friday, Saturday night, right? So why are we getting harmed even though we're not the ones drinking? Right? So it's not as simple as some people say anyone can drink if they want to drink. Right? It's not as simple as that. Also, there is a societal influence. There's a societal uh, harm that can damage other people other than yourself. Therefore, you should be also cautious about people around you. That's why Allah sends the guidance. So that fitra that we spoke about, the innate disposition that we spoke about, that is within you to know God. Also, there is something else with it to know the basic bad and good. The basic, which is like killing, raping, and stealing. You know deep down the wrong. But the details of life you don't know. That's why God has to send guidance to tell you everything. The companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, they said the Prophet وسلم, he died. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means peace be upon him, right? Peace and blessings be upon him. Yeah? He said to them that they said when the Prophet died, وسلم, he did not leave a bird except a bird flapping its wing, except he told us something about it. Everything that you can imagine about a human or about life, what you do, what you don't do, Islam has guidance for it. It doesn't leave you alone, not, don't know what, what, what you're doing or what to do, right? It gives you the guidance throughout your life. Do you agree if a manufacturer makes a phone, right? And he gives you a manual, and then that manual does not have all the information that can benefit you with the phone. And another manufacturer makes a phone and he gives you every specific detail regarding it. Which one is a better manufacturer? Allah. Yeah, because in the end, if you, if you come across a problem, you can go to the, the, the manual. But if it's not there, then you will, you will not know what to do. So Allah, He gave us our manual that is the Quran, right? The human manual for guidance, don't film him, yeah? Inshallah, yeah? Just me if you want. Uh, the human manual for guidance is the Quran, to know what is good and bad. And you, you seem like a very sincere and smart person. You're listening and you, you, you have the pure innate disposition. Because you believe the innate disposition can get clouded by society, by materialistic world, by the worldly desires, can get clouded. And when it's clouded, then the person starts confusing what is good and bad, confusing what is moral, what is immoral, doing things that are not good, right? Now, coming back to, to my point, if you believe in these things and we believe, yeah, come, come a bit closer, and we believe that what you believe in your heart is Islam, right? In, in, in a nutshell, what you believe already is, is Islam. What is stopping you from taking a step and accepting it? Is there anything stopping you from that? Lack of certainty. Lack of certainty, okay. What you say right now, this is exactly what the Quran says. Exactly what the Quran says. Quran says in, in uh, you know, I don't know what to do with this here. <laughs> Quran says in, in uh, chapter two of the Quran, yeah? It says, in the beginning of chapter two, right? Which is the biggest chapter of the Quran, which is the second chapter of the Quran. The first chapter is very small. You haven't read the Quran yet, right? I have the Quran. Have you read it? Um, let's skip through it. Okay, that's okay. So the second chapter is the biggest chapter. It says, uh, yeah, very good. So it says, It gives a description of the believer and it says, those who are certain in our verses. Certain, they have certainty, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also says in chapter 52 of the Quran, verse 35 to 36, he says, Am ghayri Were they created from nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? They create the heavens and the earth. Rather, they are not certain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with, that, with this issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, In yattabi'una illa dhan. They only follow assumption. الأنفس, and the desires of, the, of themselves. And the guidance came to them from the Lord. So Allah is saying, why are you not following the guidance? You're following your desires, you're following your own self. Even though the guidance has come to you from your Creator. And you agree you should be grateful to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that the human being, He knows that He's ungrateful to His Creator. He knows that. That's why Allah asks us, these prophets, they come and they say, worship Allah alone. Give gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Don't give gratitude to idols, pictures, other creations that the God Himself created. Rather, give it to the Creator Himself. Give it to the Creator alone. That's the essence of Islam, Tawheed. Worshipping Allah alone. 
in essence, given him unity in his act, uh, attributes of creation, in his attributes of what he does, given him unity in the devotion of what we do, worshiping, slaughtering for him all alone, like the cows and obviously some people, you know, have some crazy views, yeah? <laughs> Only for the Creator alone. Now, do you think that makes sense to you? And if it makes sense to you, then I'm inviting you to Islam. What is stopping you from entering the fold? If you already believe what Islam says? If you say uncertainty, are you certain that we will die one day? Right? You're certain. So there is that certainty. And if there is that certainty, then, then there is, we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. Right? Then don't you think we should be cautious? Right? We should be cautious. Now, let me ask you this question. Can any human being know the future absolutely? Meaning, yeah, okay, so we agree, good. <laughs> Before explaining even, okay. So that no one can know the future completely, except the creator, the one who made it, one who created time and space, literally, right? He knows everything happening and he knows everything that will happen. Now, if I show you evidences right now, right? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicting the future, right? Saying it's from God, it's not from him. Not making mistakes. His future predictions are things that are happening today, 1,400 years after his death, So if I can show you things like that, would you agree that that gives you certainty that he's a prophet of God? And if not, tell me why not. I wouldn't be able to tell you on the spot. Okay, so do we, we agree that human beings cannot know the, the future, right? If a human being knows the future, don't you agree that's a miraculous act? Things, something that is outside the human laws, basically. What we can do as humans, like me and you. It depends on the... Explain. Yeah, please. Can I give you some? I give you some. No, no problem. Prophet Muhammad he said 1,400 years ago. Yeah, he said uh, before the end of times we have what we call minor signs of the day of judgment and major signs. He's given some of the minor signs and and majority of the minor signs have happened. I'm going to tell you some of the minor signs. So he says before the day of judgment, yeah, before the major signs, he says you will see the be the Bedouin. You know the Bedouins. Bedouins are people who live in the desert and tents, they don't have civilizations and things like that, right? People who live in the deserts, Saudi Arabia and countries like that, right? Or in Dubai and these countries. Now, Prophet Muhammad SAW, he said you would see these Bedouins, Bedouin Arabs, the barefoot. They would be competing in building the tallest buildings. Where is the tallest building in the world today? In the Middle East. In the Middle East. Where, where specifically, you know? Um, I don't know if it's the Burj Khalifa. Dubai, yeah. Burj Khalifa in Dubai, very good. So the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the tallest building in the world today. Now, it's not only that Arab, other Arab countries, Bedouin specifically, because not all Arabs are Bedouin. Bedouin Arab countries are also competing with them. Like Saudi Arabia this year, they're actually building a higher tower. Now, why are they able to do that? How are they able to build all these things? You know? Um, there are many variables. Uh, yeah. We have the oil money. Very good. That's the point I'm looking for. Now, you know, 50 years ago, Dubai was a desert. They were walking barefoot. They had no oil. Nothing. They became rich because of the oil. Prophet Muhammad SAW, he said in a narration that the earth will puke its treasures, right? And he mentioned gold, gold and silver. And oil is the black gold. He said they will puke its treasures. And then he said to the Muslims, money will become abundant within you. Now I want you to, to think about this. He didn't only say the action that you will do. He didn't only specify the people who will be doing the action. He also said the means how they will be able to do the actions. Could he have known this by himself? 1,400 years ago. The only reason oil is important today is because of the technology. There was no technology at the time, no telescopes, no microscopes, nothing. Would he have known this by himself? I can't answer this question. Why not? <laughs> I'm not certain. You're not certain about it? Okay, let me give you more. Let me give you more. That's okay, that's fine, no problem. Now, before I give you more, what is the amount of predictions that will make you certain? I don't know. You don't know. So, what would make you believe in a creator? Uh, sorry, you believe in a creator already. What would make you believe Islam is true? You don't know. Okay. If you do not know something, can someone provide you evidence to support that claim? Like for example, if you don't know what would make you convinced, how can I provide evidence for you to make you convinced? Do you get the point, right? So don't you agree that you should look for a criteria? That you should look for a criteria in order for you to determine whether something is true or not? Course. Yeah. So don't you think that knowing the future is a good criteria because we agree that humans cannot know the future? It helps. It helps. So what, what would you need more? Because <laughs> I can go and tell you more predictions, right? But if you don't feel certain about it, I want to know what would make you certain, right? This is something I do not know at the moment. Okay. Now, 
I'll come back to give you a few predictions, then I will conclude with something, yeah? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the women will be taken in the future. Her belly will be cut open. And the baby will be discarded out as pieces. Out of fear, out of, fear of having pregnancy. What, what do we call that today? Cesarean. Yeah. Could he have known that 1,500 years ago? No military equipment, no, uh, sorry, no medical equipment. Could not have known this. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the deserts of Arabia will become green again. The deserts of Arabia will become green again. Now let me show you. Desert of Arabia. Yeah? I'll show you some, just two links. I always have them prepared here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You have any questions about what I say, or any any points? Oh, okay. Yeah. But you can you can engage as well, because if you engage, then you can get better information on what you're looking for, right? Because if I speak only, it's going to be my position of things, right? I want to also know what is your position on things. Now. Because I like if you have criticisms of something, you have an idea in your mind, you think that it's not good enough, then we can discuss the idea, you get the point. Okay, so this is, this is NASA, yeah? We said Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said the deserts of Arabia will become green again, meadows and rivers. What does it again mean? Again, what does again mean when he says it will become green again? Very good, but it happened before, right? Now, 1987, 1991, 2000, 2012, do you see? The greenery of the deserts of Arabia. This is, this is NASA, NASA the Gulf, yeah? So it's a, a picture of a satellite, yeah? Satellite imagery. Now, this is nature. Here they give you a, a whole entire research about 10,000 Asian lakes that exist in the deserts of Arabia, fossils of animals like elephants that only live where there is water and, and there is uh, vegetation, right? And they show you that thousands of years before it was green in meadows and rivers. How Prophet Muhammad know that it was in the past, that not only it was in the past, that it would be in the future? How would you know? <laughs> it's gonna be the same answer. <laughs> you don't know, right? Okay, so coming to, to uh, I'll just finish with this prediction, yeah? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, at his time, he had just tens of people following him, two, three, four, five, he had just tens of people, yeah? In the beginning, he had just uh, maybe 10 people, one, two, three, of course, they were multiplying, right? But they were tens in the beginning. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was talking about the countries that will become Muslim. And he named the countries that will become Muslim. So he said that Islam will spread to Syria, Jordan, Islam will spread to uh, Constantinople, Turkey, Islam will spread to India, Islam will spread to Pakistan, Islam will spread to Egypt. Even he said that you will overcome the Roman and Persian Empire. Do you know what was the Roman and Persian Empire at the time? Pardon? Do you know the Roman and Persian Empire at the time? Do you know what they was? How? how Their religion. No, uh, in, in a, as a power and civilization. Yeah, they were the two biggest empires at the time. And you have some Bedouin Arabs that don't have any military tactics, that build buildings on the floor to hide from the heat, saying that they will overcome the two biggest empires. An atheist historian that said that is paramount to the Eskimos today, saying that they will overcome uh, USA and Russia. That would be absurd if someone hears that, you say that, that will not happen, right? That was a paramount to the claim that Prophet Muhammad made, and that is what actualized, that is what happened. Said Islam spread to the east and the west. Islam spread to the east and the west, right? And Allah promised that in the Quran. He said those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and support his cause, he will aid them to have their own uh, power in the land, right? And he will protect them from those enemies, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that promise, and he fulfilled his promise as we can see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he makes a promise, it takes place. Now. Last thing I want to finish with, with, with is this. Do you read philosophy? Who have you read philosophy of? Stoicism. Sorry? Stoicism. What else? Aurelius and what else? Um, that's my main branch of philosophy. I haven't okay. read much. Okay. Would you agree with me if I say that this skepticism, this, this hyper skepticism is coming from the philosophy you're reading? No. So where do you think it's coming from? That I can't answer. <laughs> okay. So, were you always that way? Um, in terms of finding God? Or were you, were you not always a believer? No. Okay, so how did you find God? Over time, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an immediate decision. Okay. I didn't wake up one day and believe. Okay, so what helped you into getting that decision? You just thought about life, about things, or was it a, a, something you read? Was it an engagement with another person? I guess so. A collection of many variables. Okay, good. So. About the skepticism part, was it always with you? That's the, point, that's the main point that I want to ask about. Uh, is your parents, are your parents religious? They're religious. 
What religion are they following? Christianity. Christianity, okay. So what is not making you follow Christianity, for example? You don't know. Okay. That will be the premise of all of these videos. Will be a premise of? These videos, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm a mass searching for us, not claiming to have us. Yeah, that's fine, but uh, 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 when someone gives you answers like I gave, right, for example, right? It would have to be your decision whether you accept or reject. Didn't you agree? But if you say, I don't know, you will not move from your position, right? So I'm saying what is not making you, after you've given the answers, like for example right now, yeah? After you've given the answers, what is not making you move forward? If you say, I don't know, then that would not be helping you moving forward ever. Because you can listen for, for 10,000 years, right? But if you don't make a decision, it's not going to change your state of being, right? Like we have two people, one digging, right? And another person digging. And I come to them and I say the gold is there. One, he leaves where he's digging and he starts digging there. The other person, he continues digging. Which one is a rational person? The one who follows the gold. Okay, so if I'm telling you the gold is here, <laughs> like in the Quran, obviously, yeah, then we, we will not continue digging, right? We're not saying, I don't know, we'll continue searching. We will accept the truth. Then if we find an issue with the truth, then we look, if we don't find answers, if we find the problem, then you can leave it and continue your search, right? Don't you agree that's a, a, a logical way to take things? Rather than if you say, I don't know, then you will not move. Because I speak with a lot of people, especially atheists, right? Agnostic, etc. They say, I don't know, like you. But then I say, when are you going to move forward? Because I don't know is, you will not live forever. You will not live forever. Do you know when you're gonna die, the day you will die? You don't know. So do you know how much time you left for you to make a decision? So it's not an issue of saying, I don't know, and just keep it standing on the side, do you agree? It's an issue of looking for the truth. And once I find compelling evidences, like the ones I said, which you agreed that no one can know the future except God, and you've given evidences of someone who has predictions of things that we're living, we're encountering today, right? Are happening today, which are definitely cannot be known by a bit desert between area. And that's just one type of the evidences, by the way. There's many more evidences. Like, for example, the Quran is preserved. Right? It's the only Asian religious scripture that is preserved word for word, right? That the Quran uh, has no mistakes, no errors, no contradictions. It makes a claim if it, it was not from God, then you'll find any, many errors and contradictions, right? The Quran cannot be imitated, it cannot produce something similar to that of the Quran. It cannot produce something linguistically, the linguistic structure of the Quran cannot be imitated. And that challenge has been here for 1,400 years ago. If anyone was, able, was ever able to imitate it, the Arabs would not be Muslims, right? They would leave Islam. So, not only that, also the Quran speaks about things in history that no one knows, right? Uh, except, 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 believe me, he has some, he has some issues, he has some, he has some, he has some issues with, with his mind. He ran from the debate earlier, so I'm to let it from the debate earlier. Let him, let him let it out, let him let it out, that's all right. Now, coming to our point, so all of these are evidences, all of these are evidences to prove that the Quran is coming from the creator. And if these claims are proofs that the Qur'an is from God, then we should make a step forward, right? Because the Qur'an tells us when you encounter someone, right? You tell him about Islam, and he's not sure of his position. You should remind him that death is always coming. Death is always coming. The reason that made me personally, right, practice my religion, because I was not always practicing, right? It's a gradual step, as you said, right? It's a gradual process. The reason that made me practice is thinking about death. If you think about death, you realize that nothing in this world is worth spending time upon, except the truth. Because if I spend time uh, like getting money, getting fame, getting, I will die and I will leave it, right? It's not gonna come with me to the grave. Just like Egyptians used to believe that they will get their goods with them in the grave, they used to keep money and food with them. And we came and we took their gold and silver, right? We took it in the end from the graves. They didn't use it because they died already. You're not gonna use what you had in this life. Why are you holding on to what you have in this life? Why you don't hold on to the next what is going to come? Especially if there is evidences, like I said. If there was no evidence here, you would not be believers. Muslims, right? It's the uh, biggest growing religion in the world, right? You have two billion people believing in this message. So, I don't want to feel like, I don't want you to feel like I'm forcing something on you. And I'm sure no one can force anything on you, right? You know how to approach things and you know how to make decisions. But I'm making you think about the holistic picture of things, right? And... If you say, I don't know, then why you don't think about the reason, right? It's two options. I can say, I don't know, and not think about why I don't know. And I say, I don't know, I'll move on, right? So if you say, I don't know, why you don't think about the reason that's making you not take a step forward? That's why I'm here. 
That's why you're here. That's good. So th does anyone have the Quran with him? Can you ask the, the, cam the, the cameraman? One of them will have the Quran, definitely. Yeah. I will give you a copy of the Quran. You have a copy already, right? Uh, brother, 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 brother. He has a copy already. Ask him if he, they have any books, any books, books about Islam. Now, uh, when you read the Quran, Quran is not a, a authored book by a human. That's what we believe as Muslims, yeah? So the Quran is not read like someone reads a newspaper or reads a book, right? If you do that, you will not benefit from the Quran. Benefiting from the Quran is by pondering upon the Quran. Meaning that I read one verse and I, I think, what is God saying here, right? What is he trying to say? Next verse, what is the correlation between this verse and the previous verse? What is the point that God is making in this verse? That's how the Quran is read. So some people, they tell me I read the Quran. Then I say, okay, what does the Quran say about X, Y, and Z? You say, I don't know. You haven't pondered on what you read, right? You just read him through it like it was a newspaper. It will not benefit you. So you have to spend your time. Yes, Zakalaf here. You're also giving a Quran, you know, we give you an ex extra copy, no problem. <laughs> This one is for Muslims in Jersey, I know it. I know it. I can give you this one maybe. Yeah. So this is this one has a recitation of the Quran, right? Which you can listen to. Yeah, yeah no problem. You can listen to the recitation of the Quran. And the last thing last thing I say is ponder upon these things. And it's good you're here. You're searching for the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised whoever seeks and searches for the truth with sincerity, Allah will guide him to the truth. That's the promise of Allah. So I guarantee that Allah will guide you the truth if you're sincere and open minded. But ponder upon what we said. What is making me continue digging if the gold is there, right? <laughs> you know, a pleasure talking to you. Do you have any questions for me? No. Yeah. no. Pleasure talking to you, and I hope I didn't offend you in any way. I didn't say anything offensively, and and I'm I'm hoping in the future you can come back. We can have a discussion. If you have any questions about anything I said, please come back. Ask me. You said this or you said that, right? I'm pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.